we want to find the solution to the given initial value problem. If we take a look at the given differential equation, notice how it's a linear second order homogeneous differential equation with constant coefficients, meaning it fits this form here. And therefore we can find the general solution using the characteristic equation given here, where the values of a, b, and c are the constant coefficients in the differential equations. And then once we find the solutions to the characteristic equation, or the characteristic values, we can determine which form we'll use for the general solution, and then from there we can find the particular solution to this initial value problem. So again, looking at the given differential equation, notice that a is equal to one, b is equal to four, and c is equal to three, which means the characteristic equation would be r squared plus four r plus three equals zero. And we can solve this quadratic by factoring. It'll factor into two binomial factors. The factors of r squared are r and r. The factors of positive three that add to positive four are positive three and positive one. So this product is equal to zero when r is equal to negative three or r is equal to negative one. Notice how we have two distinct real roots which helps us determine which form we use for the general solution. So for a quick review, if the characteristic equation has two distinct real roots, we use this form of the general solution. If we have two real but equal roots, we use this form for the general solution. And if we have complex roots, we use this form for the general solution. So in our case, for this example, we're using the form from number one. Let's go ahead and let r sub one be equal to negative three and r sub two be equal to negative one. So the general solution would be y of x equals c sub one, a constant, times e, raised to the power of r sub one times x, that would be negative three x, plus c sub two times e raised to the power of r sub two times x, which would be negative one times x or negative x. And now to solve the initial value problem, we still have to use our initial conditions here, y of zero equals two and y prime of zero equals negative one to determine the values of c sub one and c sub two. But to do this, we'll also have to find the first derivative, so let's go ahead and do that now y prime of x would be equal to c sub one times e to the power of negative three x times negative three, or negative three c sub one e to the power of negative three x plus c sub two times e to the power of negative x times negative one, or minus c sub two e to the negative x. Since we know that y of zero equals two, we can use our function y, substitute zero for x, and know that it's equal to positive two. So if x equals zero, we would have c sub one times e to the power of negative three times zero, that's zero, plus c sub two times e to the power of zero must equal two. This gives us the equation c sub one plus c sub two equals positive two. Again, using the initial condition, and our function y. And now we also know that y prime of zero equals negative one. So if y prime of zero equals negative one, we can now use our derivative function to determine a second equation involving c sub one and c sub two. So if y prime of zero equals negative one, we'll substitute zero for x again and know the derivative function must be equal to negative one. So if x is zero and e to the zero is equal to one, we would have negative three times c sub one minus c sub two equals negative one. Notice now we have two equations that involve c sub one and c sub two. So now we can solve for c sub one and c sub two by solving this as a system of equations. Let's go ahead and do this on the next slide. 
Again, we know c sub one plus c sub two equals positive two, and negative three times c sub one minus c sub two equals negative one. Notice how the c sub two terms are opposites, so let's go ahead and solve this system using addition. So we'll add these two equations together. Notice how the c sub two terms simplify to zero, giving us negative two times c sub one must equal positive one. Dividing both sides by negative two gives us c sub one equals negative one half. And now to find c sub two, let's substitute negative one half for c sub one in this first equation. So again, we now know that c sub one is equal to negative one half, so we have negative one half plus c sub two equals positive two. Adding one half to both sides would give us c sub two equals two plus one half, or five halves. And now that we know the value of c sub one and c sub two, we now have enough information to find the solution to the given initial value problem. Remember, we already found the general solution was y of x equals c sub one times e to the power of negative three x plus c sub two times e to the power of negative x. And now we know the values of c sub one and c sub two. So the solution to the initial value problem is y of x equals negative one half times e to the power of negative three x plus five halves times e to the power of negative x. Now to help us verify that this solution is correct, let's go ahead and graph this on the coordinate plane. And because y of zero equals two, this function must pass through the point zero two. Notice here's the point zero two, here's the graph of our solution, and it does pass through the given point. I hope you found this explanation helpful.